Hey guys, this is Diego Diablo from ShopAirbrush.com and I am working on a custom cover for the underneath um, hood of a car. So this is a, a Nissan R35 cover and uh, I guess it's, I think it's called the under bonnet cover. And uh, I just want to do a quick tutorial and uh, do the full one from the video. So I just want to explain a few things. Uh, what I'm using is an Iwata airbrush. It's a HP a CH airbrush and I'm um, layering a layer of black on here first. So even though, uh, just uh, first thing, even though it's already black, if you add, uh, I'm using jet black right here, it's a nice deeper, richer black from uh, Createx colors. Um, it, it lays down a nice tone and uh, makes it easier to layer other colors on top of it. So, a lot of times uh, if you start out, like if you see uh, something that's already painted, um, a lot of people don't think to paint over it again, but uh, definitely uh, do that because it lays a really nice base and foundation. So that's uh, just you know just a good tip. And uh, this is the Grim Reaper, man, death. Uh, so a lot of uh, automotive stuff has a lot of skulls and and uh, Grim Reapers and things like that. So I thought it'd be good to um, really have a really cool design for this one. And uh, they gave me the reference image and everything, so I'm just working off of uh, what the customer gave me. But it's a really cool image. Uh, and this car is super dope. It's a R35. I'm not really too knowledgeable about cars, but I'm really learning. And uh, so what I'm doing here is adding a layer of opaque. Well, it's a layer of white. So it's a layer of opaque white, and uh, it lays down the darkest whites first. Um, And uh, I'm just pretty much outlining it, kind of like a coloring book, filling it in and then outlining around the outside edges. And I drew everything on here with a colored pencil. So this is a white Prisma color pencil. I like using these for black, on, you know, on black designs because the oil is really smooth and it lays on nice, uh, sharp and, you know, nice lines and they're easy to see. So I'm adding white here and this creates the highlights for the main subject. <clears throat> and uh, so looking at the reference photo, the light comes from the front, you know, facing the Grim Reaper. So it's pretty much the light source is the top, down, and then the bottom, there's these like kind of like, uh, I guess you call it flames coming from the bottom, and then the front. So I fill in the rib cage, the right side, and then I move my way over to the bottom. And then the left. And what I'm really doing is just filling it in as much as I can, so you know I have an idea of where all the the, the whole shape is and the outline is. Adding some more highlights at the top by shoulder blades, and then here on the side, I'm really kind of making little jagged lines creating little folds and everything for his his jacket, his cloak that he's wearing. And I try to keep the lines as tight as possible at the beginning so that way when I continue adding more detail and drawing more um, more, more um, artwork on top of it and laying more paint it still remains sharp and uh, has all the detail on there. So I'm using whites on the top of the shoulders. I'm adding some reducer here. So the reduction ratio is about 20%. I usually start about that much. It keeps it fairly uh, opaque, but at the same time, I can shoot the color out very well and still get my, a lot of control and uh, a lot of crisp lines. So I'm airbrushing a lot of the shadows underneath. Some of the flames start to emerge. I have a little tiny kind of flame stencil I use too. And this is a time lapse sped up, you know, obviously. But uh, I'm always kind of uh, looking backwards towards the canvas to really see what I need to paint next. To kind of pull back. 
So doing, I'm doing the right side of his uh, hands, the bones, and the bone structure. Adding more flames by the top of the highlights. And the bone structure. And then the right side of the, of the rest of his fingers. And he has like these claws. So that kind of drags down. But you notice I'm starting on the right side and adding the, the light kind of, uh, you know, highlights and kind of shading them in. I work as if I'm just using one color. So say if I'm painting this entire thing just with white, I'll paint all the detail that I possibly can with white. So that's how I look at it. I don't really don't look at it as um, just painting the white, what's white on the picture. The whole thing is painted completely. And that's a good tip too. Because, you know, when you start out, you try to like just see the colors and paint one color at a time. Um, but this process is how I start every single painting I do and every single painting you see in my channel is going to be painted this way because this is just, um, you know, the, I guess you'd call it the, the process of painting, the academic process or whatever. Adding a white highlight at the top of his sickle. Just really pay attention to that reference photo. And um, bring some of those flames up there again. So the right side, the top of his hood. If you notice, all the white highlights um, are coming from the top down. So the, the top, the highest part of his hood, the highest part of his shoulder blades. The front of the skull, the bones inside of his, you know, uh, skeleton, his rib cage. Moving over to the left side, adding some more detail in there. And uh, I like using Illustration White 2 by Createx, which is a great uh, paint to use. I off and on mix those two together. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, chain. You know, sometimes I use, I use illustration white, and sometimes I use the opaque white. It just depends if I'm trying to get sharp lines or if I'm trying to make the white really bright. So now that's done. It adds a layer of uh, wicked blue on top of it. So this is reduced about 20%, and I kind of missed it over all of the uh, flames, his jacket, the bottom of the sickle. And then I kind of just, um, you know, kind of just uh, airbrush it around the entire design, just framing the center. This creates a focal point for the uh, the the skeleton, you know, the Grim Reaper that you're painting. And the car is also called Reaper, which is pretty cool. It's a really uh, it's a really dope car, Nissan R35. So I use these little tiny stencils in there too. I use these skull stencils and kind of position them and turn them about here and there. So that way each of the faces and then the head and everything isn't so, uh, so it doesn't look so, you know, the one dimensional. <clears throat> it's different around the entire um, painting. All right, just added some blue. And then I kind of shoot with some reducer through the gun every time I want to clean it. That keeps it, uh, you know, the colors pretty pure. Now I'm using yellow ochre. And I'm just misting it over the skull, the face, the um, rib cage. The skeleton hand and um, the left and right. This gives it that bone kind of uh, yellow brown tone. But you, you notice all the white that I laid on there before is an opaque color. An opaque color. So this yellow ochre is a transparent color. So when I airbrush on top of an opaque color, you can still see it. You can still see all the white from underneath. It's just tinted now. 
see all the white underneath. It's just tinting that. And that gives it that cool effect, you know, that gives it that three dimensional look too. And I really pay attention. I work my the cool I work the painting from the outside in, so the shadows would be like underneath the hood, by the left, the right side of his face, by the left, the right side of uh, his uh, you know torso, and the rib cage. Really paying attention to the darkest parts of the painting, and then uh, you know blending that in. So I come back again with, I believe this is illustration white for more detail. Adding some more of those highlights by his teeth, by the bottom of his jaw, and the ends of the rib cage again. Just bringing those those rib cages, you know, the rib cage to life, making it super three dimensional. Same thing with uh, the skull too. And then reestablishing the highlights on the top of the hood, because when I went over with the blue, it's really subtle, but it mists over. And even if you see a white highlight, say you see a, a highlight that still looks white and you didn't, you missed it, uh, the blue will kind of trail off and it won't be that exactly that pure white again. So I use that to kind of, you know, remember when I'm painting, you know, to do that again. Using those stencils again to bring back those skulls and just flipping it around so it gives it some movement. So it's not the same set of skulls over and over again, so it doesn't look so repetitive. Sometimes I'll use the right side, I'll flip it, and then sometimes I'll you know, dry off the stencil and use the other side. Add some more highlights by his right cloak, left cloak. By the right side of his hands. And then airbrushing some detail into the sickle and then the handle. Sometimes, you know, I always, you know, get carried away by just doing the main subject. But you really got to remember to do detail on all parts of it. Because when said and done, everyone really looks at the entire painting left and right. But... Um, another tip is I always try to do more detail to the main focus, you know, the main focal point. So that gives it that, that, that focus. So I'm dragging some white highlights around the outside of his fingers. But I'm always keeping the highlight on the top or in the edges. And then dragging a free hand kind of flame down the sides of the skull. Kind of make it look like smoke. And it can be stylized too. It doesn't have to look exactly like a flame. That gives it, that when you do that, then, you know, you create your own style. I guess you'd call, you know, call it. There's no rules to art or art making. You know, just, I guess, well, who said this? I think Pablo Picasso said, learn all the rules and then you can break them so you know that being said just learn to draw really well paint really well and uh once you that once you got that going man you can pretty much paint anything and just have fun so i'm uh finishing up some of the flames here using that freehand stencil i really like it's a smaller one and there's a larger one I use for like flames and smoke. But the blues on there, the skulls are on there, the yellow ochre is on there. So all the all the pretty much all the colors are on there. And I like Cretex paints, uh, Cretex illustration paints. I love those uh, for doing super detailed work and illustrations work, and uh, automotive work too. So just uh, yeah, let me know what kind of paint uh, system you like too, and uh, drop in the comments. I added this uh, kind of like a soul body person in there. Adding some more highlights to the hood.
and some more highlights of the skeleton. And if you guys want to learn how to do skulls super, uh, you know, how to draw them, there's a really good uh, Anatomy for Artists book. Uh, I recommend that. It's one of my favorite books to learning you know, how to paint and draw skulls. And uh, you probably can find it on Amazon too for like 15, maybe 20 bucks. So I added white into the yellow ochre. And then I wanted to use it as a highlighting color. So I wanted to keep those bright highlights, but I didn't want it to be a complete white, so I kind of mixed these, you know, custom color. See, it's really subtle there, but, uh, you know, it still keeps that bone color, that's kill it still keeps that bone look, and that's good to, to have, so you don't lose that, you know, you don't lose it. And I kind of go back and forth and mix the colors again, just testing them as I paint. It's all practice, and you're always learning and uh, trying new things. So I'm adding more blue on there, and then I'm going back over the skulls again. So the new white skulls I created are going to be the ones that pop out, the, you know, the closest to you. Those are going to be the the brightest ones, and the other ones are kind of going to recede in the background. But if you layer them using uh, you know these stencils or just uh, if you draw them either way you know you can create a really cool a really cool um, you know painting it gives a lot of you know, depth and dimension and uh, when people look at it they get to see something you know they look at for a while and uh, that's really cool it's kind of what you aim for when you uh, start you know painting and drawing and all that You want to make work that people from the end of the gallery or the end of the car show or whatever you're painting, the mall, whatever, will stop and they'll like, hey, what is that? You want to look at it. So if you can succeed in drawing someone's attention from far away, then I think that's a you know a good piece of art. So I'm using this smoke black now, and I'm adding the shadows on the top by his, you know, top of his skull, by the side of his face, and adding the shadows in his hands. <clears throat> and smoke black is a transparent black, so it doesn't cover up what you've painted 100%. So that's really nice, so you can still keep all those uh, subtle colors and uh, all those, those shading, those soft shading and transitions. <clears throat> And uh, I'm going back again with white. I'm really using a lot of white in this painting, if you noticed. And um, I really wanted to make the, the, the fire, the flames, the whole thing stand out a lot. I think that's important. Uh, you know, just kind of, you know, learn, kind of uh, have a goal of what you want to achieve by the end of it and to stick with that. I think that was one of mine. And then another goal, I guess I said, set for myself painting this was to make the skull as, you know, realistic if I could as possible. So I really wanted to stand out, especially when you're working with car guys, you know. So I'm adding the highlight again on the top of the hood so adding, the highlight again. adding some more flames by his shoulders and so the flame source if you notice is from the bottom up so the skulls all the souls the skulls represent the souls um, you know are trying to escape and they're surrounding the reaper or maybe they're working for him who knows um, they're kind of wrapping around his entire body so the flames go left and right it really covers this entire um, bonnet undercover of the for the car. So there's a lot of movement. So I'm really just making sure the flames go up and uh, you know to the left or right, just from the center out.
going back by his teeth, adding those highlights. And then adding some more detail on the sickle on the left side. And then anywhere else I can add these, this, you know, use this color, I'll try to add as much as I can to the painting, you know, without taking it away. And there's also, a, there's also a part of when you use too much of a color, you can start covering up what you've already done. And you have to be very, like, kind of aware of that, too, that you don't do that. But, uh, you know, it's all practice, so you'll learn when you're going too far. And, uh, you know, I just kind of encourage you to do the best you can. Yeah, but I really like using this gun inside Watt HPCH. I can uh, adjust the pressure at the bottom with the valve. It's always cool, so I don't have to keep on doing it at the compressor. Oh yeah, and somebody that uh, yeah, and uh, those little kind of circles inside of there, those little holes are kind of taped in there, so uh, they don't fall out. And then I can airbrush over them too, so it you know doesn't look odd or off. So the one on the right, and the one on the top left, I put back in there, and then so the one on the right, those little button things, and then I airbrushed over them. I may have done that off camera. Yeah, I believe I do 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 handful letters asked me about that. So I wanted to make sure I answered that. So I'm adding some more detail to the top of the sickle, giving that chrome kind of like metallic look. Just using white and then still playing off like the black from the background. And black is always difficult to paint on just because it's black and you have to always paint over like a start with a layer of white or just an opaque color first so it's a lot more work to do but if you do it take your time you can make it look super cool and I think a lot of you know uh, t-shirts or anything that's painted on fabric or whatever in general looks really awesome on black it really stands out so just adjusting the color and then I'm using that Wicked smoke black again, so it's just a transparent black, and you can use it to shade on top of whatever you finished painting. So if you want to add that extra shadow, and it really helps out when you do when you're working with, uh, you know, um, you know horror characters or working with skulls or um, you know, just characters in general. Um, adding like a shade of you know a darker tone to it can really bring a life of something you're working on. So anything that's like fantasy, that's uh, you know not like a hyper realistic portrait, I guess whatever. So I'm adding that wicked blue again, and I don't think I reduced it that much this time. I think it's like 10% reduced. So I can give it a more vibrant blue. So adding that around the rest of the flames, outside the uh, kind of like circling around the so whole around the uh, the panel, just so the, uh, that frames the, uh, the, the, the 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 Grim Reaper in the middle. Because uh, just another tip, if you have, you know, too bright of colors, say on the outside, um, everyone's gonna their eyes are gonna go everywhere. But if you have a, you know, the whole focal point, if you establish your focal point, and you do that early on, which is obviously this is Grim Reaper in the center, then uh, then you know your eyes know where to go first, and then it's it's, it's just more like when you're painting anything, it's more pleasant to look at. So always remember to create your focal point what you want the whole subject of whatever you're painting to be and um, remember where your uh, light source is so is it above below 
In this case, it's above, below, and in front. It's pretty much everywhere. But more, mostly it's above. So that, that'll that help you out with a lot. That'll help you know where to put the, the highlights at, uh, most of the shadows, you know, where to put those at. And you can, you know, you don't have to rely so much on reference photos. You can pretty much work intuitively, I guess. So I'm just adding more of that yellow ochre and then some of that white and that's bringing that bone color back again in this hand in his right hand left hand and then just going over again because I thought I added too much white so I kind of toned it down a little bit with that bone color bringing that back adding some more detail in his hands and he has like those kind of witch hands those, those like claw kind of fingers so that was kind of a Cool thing to paint. Just making a little darker brown. And I think I'm using burnt sienna and burnt umber. Burnt sienna is warmer, and burnt umber is a little kind of darker tone color. But I really like using burnt sienna a lot. It's it's a brownish kind of warm color, more towards the orange side. But it really lightens lightens a lot of things up, and using a lot of portraits too. So that's one of my favorite colors. I always have to have that whenever I'm painting, pretty much anything. Skulls, bones, portraits of people, animals, everything. So I'm using this black again. This jet black, and this is outlining the bones in his hand. So this is just pushing back the blackest blacks. And this is usually, I reserve this for the last stage of whatever I'm painting. I want to make the darkest parts super black which is the inside of his eyes <clears throat> and um, you know, underneath his his jaw, inside of his rib cage, underneath his rib cage, and in between his fingers to really just give it a sharp edge so it's not so blurry. And the sharpest edges, the sharpest parts are going to be what you're focusing on. Even outside, like the sickle and parts of that, if that's a little blurry, that's fine. That's actually how we look at something. You know, that's how our eyes only, our eyes only focus on one thing, and everything around the outside is blurry anyways, so... It's okay to, to do that. And a lot of paintings, you know, actually do do that. And it's, if, if you do it correctly, like if you have like a background... Uh, you know, it looks really cool. So I'm airbrushing some of the black to the background again, just making that darker. Airbrushing some detail in the sickle again. And then going back to the hood, just shading it in, adding that kind of like medium gray. Making the peak of the hood. And then the sharp lines and shadows around the shoulders. And the folds of his jacket. So, I mean, I had a great time painting this. Uh, I'm super excited to uh, share some more tutorials with you guys. And um, yeah, any other tutorials or anything you need to know, man, let me know. Drop a comment. And uh, if you got, if you're on Instagram, follow me at minus paints. And uh, if you're on uh, YouTube, follow me here. I do live streams every Thursday at 9 p.m. And um, yeah, that's about it. I'm just touching it up with some. Some transparent black and uh, adding some more white highlights. But that's the Grim Reaper. And uh, I'm going to have some more tutorials coming up. So I appreciate everyone following and everyone, uh, uh, you know, 
dropping comments and just, you know, all that. So if there's anything I can teach you, anything that uh, you want to learn or anything, just uh, let me know. So I'm going to try to go over as much as I can. And if I missed anything about this that I'm working on, let me know too. So I can I try to answer as much as I can. Sign a little bit, say the name, of course. There it is, man, the Grim Reaper. All right, thank you guys. I appreciate you for following. Uh, please subscribe and uh, uh, let me know if you want to see any more videos. Thanks. Uh, see you guys later. All right, bye.